room for grief and allow folks to chime in and do any preliminary. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Beasley, superintendent. Thank you for joining us today on this live YouTube Facebook update relative to our Clayton County Public Schools reopening of school options. We'll give everyone about a minute or so. I know it's a little late beyond a little past one, but we'll give everyone about a minute or so to participate uh, and connect to this live event. So thank you. I'd like you, if you will, share with others that this mm -hmm. event is occurring at this time. Let your family, your friends, your neighbors, others that are connected to you via social media or send them an email while you, if you can, using your device to let them know that we're sharing a very, very important update relative to the reopening of schools here in Clayton County Public Schools. So again, if you would, we'll give you about a minute or so to do that. Thank you. For those of you that are joining, joining us, we're just giving our participants about a minute or so to inform friends and relatives, others, that this event is occurring at this time. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Again, I'm Dr. Beasley, Superintendent of Schools here in Clayton County Public Schools. And it's always an honor uh, to engage with our community. Today, we have a very important topic that we'd like to discuss. As a matter of fact, we'll be discussing our reopening of schools plan as we shared with the board last night. As you all know, we're in this global pandemic and it's impacting not only our nation, our state and our community in very significant and fundamental ways. School was closed on March 16th. We ended last school year and we're preparing to begin the new school year. As a reminder, the first day of school is August 3rd. Now what that looks like, you will hear the plan, but please make a note on your calendars. The first day of school for Clayton County Public Schools will be August 3rd. So let's talk about some updates relative to the reopening of our school district for the 2021 school year. The first thing you should know is that we have considered many pieces of data. Stakeholder surveys would be one of the pieces of data that we've considered. What are our stakeholders sharing with us as it pertains to reopening schools? You should know that our parent survey share that most, most of our parents, if you can see this, most of our parents, I will say about 67, almost 68% are either uncomfortable or very uncomfortable with students coming back, even with safety guidelines in place. So that was a very critical piece of data that we have or had to consider. You should know that most of our parents are more comfortable with the blended learning and distance learning at this time. We had a very small percent that were comfortable with face-to-face -face instruction at the time of this survey. But you can see roughly 68% are okay with some type of full distance learning or blended learning, which includes a combination of face-to-face -face and virtual learning. Overall, we asked parents, how did we do? Because we had to suddenly go into virtual learning in the spring on March 16th. We asked everyone who participated to give us a grade as a district. How did we do? Well, most of you gave us an A, B, or C. We did get a few Bs and Fs, no more than, what, 14%. But most of you, about 86% of you gave us an A, B, or C. So teachers, I have to commend you. Principals, I have to commend you for your efforts. But thank you, parents, for sharing with us how we did during the spring. And we'll be using the feedback that you've given us as we make plans for the new year. There were some major things that surfaced on one of the questions in the parent survey. What would prevent our parents from allowing their child or children to return? There were three, increase in COVID-19 cases, inadequate safety measures, and of course, not practicing social distancing. 
And so those are major considerations that we thought would inf were important to inform our decisions. So we survey parents, and of course we have to survey employees. Our employee survey is currently in progress, but we do have some preliminary results that we'd like to share. I want you to see here that right now, most of the people participating in the employee survey are school-based employees. That would be teachers, administrators, counselors, media specialists. We have, of course, uh, school-based paraprofessionals, para custodians, bookkeepers, and all. Transportation department is, has participated, maintenance technology and district level staff, and even substitute teachers and others. Right now, about 3,800 people have participated in the employee survey. That's pretty good considering we have about 7,000 or so employees. So we basically asked them their feedback on uh, their level, if you will, of support, comfort with the various models that I'll be going over shortly. I want you to see that we have four models that they responded to. Model A or option A, face-to-face, -face, all face-to-face. -face. Option B, all virtual. Option C, a combination or blend of face-to-face -face and virtual. And option D, which will go concurrently with options A, B, and C, a full virtual academy. As you can see, many were not comfortable with face-to-face -face, and people are becoming increasingly comfortable with the option B and C, the virtual and blended options. And again, for the, your benefit, we've sent this PowerPoint to all of you so you can follow along with us just in case you can't see uh, the screen as I can see it presenting to you. We asked our employees about their level of com comfort with our safety protocols and I am pleased to share that many of uh, them strongly agree or agree with the safety protocols that we have put in place. And so that's a good, a good indicator that we're moving in the right direction. I want you to know that your county, your county, your superintendent and the entire team, we have been engaged at many levels at the national, state, regional, local level, county within the county and outside. We're looking at several pieces of data from the Georgia Department of Public Health and from the Clayton County Board of Health. Clearly, we've got to use this data. We've had to use this data to help frame the options that I will soon share. I should remind all of us, you all know I have to take a moment to remind us, this data is critical to our decision. And so I'll share what I've shared with all. You know, we hear two words in our, our nation, rights and responsibilities. But we've been hearing a whole lot about rights versus responsibilities. So I want to hope, I hope that we as a nation, we as a community will spend more time talking about responsibilities than we do rights because this data impacts our children going back to school face to face. Therefore, if we want, if we want, our children to come back to school in a face-to-face -face environment, we've got to work toward improving this data. So let's continue and let's talk about our framework. As we made decisions of uh, the developed options, we looked at several things. We looked at our resources, funding and staff resources, our data, pandemic data, survey data, our guidelines from the Georgia Department of Education, our CDC guidelines, Clayton County Board of Health, Georgia Department of public health, and our community collaboration, the various task force that we participated on, whether they're in a regional, metro, state, or national. Several pieces of information were gathered to inform our reopening plan and the models that we have selected. So let's talk very quickly about the models, very quickly about the models. We call these our instructional delivery models. There are four options, four options, four options. Option A is the model for a low risk situation as we're looking at our data, pandemic data. Again, option A is a model for the low risk situation. That model basically shares 
that all elementary, middle, and high school students will return back to school face-to-face. -face. Again, option A, low risk. All elementary, middle, and high school students will return back to school face-to-face. -face. It's based upon our data that says that we have no or low spread. So it's important that everyone understands that our option or our options are connected to the data, which makes all of us responsible within our county, within the metro area, within our state, within our nation, because safety has to be the priority. So option A, low risk, all face-to-face -face for all elementary, middle, and high school students connected to the data that says that we have no or low spread. Option B, we go from low risk to very high risk. That's all virtual learning. In other words, just like we ended the school year virtually, we will begin the school year virtually if it's high risk. Option B, again, is high risk. All elementary, middle, and high school students will return, will stay home virtually. They'll start school virtually. Teachers will remain at home and work virtually. Again, that's option B, all virtual learning if it's high risk. Again, high risk means substantial spread. Let me go back. We go. Substantial spread. So we talked about low risk, all face to face, high risk, all virtual. So what's in the middle? Middle is what we call moderate risk. That's our option C. In this situation, we are going toward a blended option. That means that students will engage in both face to face and virtual learning. Again, Option C is moderate risk, tied to the state's data from the Department of Public Health. It means minimal or moderate spread of the virus. Minimal or moderate spread. Option C, again, is a blended model. What does that mean? What we're going to do with option C is every student will be designated an A or B day. A day would be on Monday, Wednesday, B day would be on Tuesday, Thursday. Students on A day would come to school on Monday, Wednesday. Students on B day would come on Tuesday, Thursday. And everyone will engage in virtual learning on Fridays. When you're not in school, you can be working online. That allows us to adhere to social distancing to the extent that we can. It also allows every student the option of having face-to-face -face time with their teacher but also requires them to spend time online virtually. I must share that option B and option C does cause a concern with relative to child care. And figured out that problem. We're focused on ensuring that safety is, a, is the priority and students can learn. And so I have to be honest, as long as this pandemic is at play in our, in our community, in our state, in our nation, as long as we're not able to go back face to face, child care will be an issue based upon the models that we have, especially if we can't go back face to face. So again, option A, low risk is all face to face. Option B, high risk is all virtual. Option C is in the middle, moderate risk a blend of face-to-face -face and virtual using an A-B schedule. And then option D would be for those parents who are requesting that their child participate at, in a virtual learning environment every day of the week for at least one semester or two semesters, semesters, which will be the entire year. This option we will share for parents to sign up with in the early part of July. Option D would occur concurrently with whatever option we implement, A, B, or C. So let's talk very quickly about which option right now are we leaning towards. Right now in our county, our data tells us that we are at minimal moderate risk of spread. So right now we're leaning towards option C. What does that mean? Right now we're planning 
to have blended instruction on August 3rd, where half of our kids are coming on A day, Monday, Wednesdays, half of them are coming on B day, Tuesday, Thursdays, and all of them are virtually learning on Fridays. Now, this data is changing every week. This data is changing every day. So we will be sending out announcements weekly. I'll call them instructional model option updates, IMO updates. We'll send those out weekly to let you know which way we're leaning. And by July 28th, when I do the last Facebook Live session before school begins on August 3rd, we will convey our final decision, the model that we will start with. But right now, based on the data, we're leaning toward option C. So let me make sure we're clear. All face-to-face, -face, that's easy to get. Thumbs up if you get that. Let's see some thumbs up. I need to see thumbs up. You get option A. Low risk, all face-to-face. -face. Hit those thumbs up so I can see. Very good. That's an easy one to get, all face-to-face. -face. Option B is all virtual. High risk, thumbs up if you get that. If the data says high risk, we all remain virtually at home and we learn virtually. Thumbs up if you get that. Option C is the one that is a little challenging, so let me make sure you get it. Option C basically takes all of our stu students and we cut it, in, we cut our pop enrollment in half, and so half will come on Monday and Wednesdays, and the other half will come on Tuesday and Thursdays. Everyone will participate in virtual learning on Fridays. When students are not in school, they will engage in virtual learning. This gives us a chance to ensure that all students have access, face-to-face -face access to a teacher, but it also allows us to do social distancing to the extent that we can. On the option C model, all the kids in a family will all come to school on the same day. So if you have siblings and you all are living in one house together with your parents, your guardians, all of you will come either on A day or all of you will either come on B day. We are doing all of that work behind the scenes to ensure that a family or the children in one family living together in one household, that they all come to school on the very same day, whether it be on the A schedule, Monday and Wednesdays, or the B schedule, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And as a reminder, everyone will be virtually learning on Fridays. Now, what happens with laptops? Because in order to do virtual learning, well, for option B, you, get, you gotta have Chromebooks. Option C, we need devices. Our board has approved for us to order devices. So our technology department is in the process of ordering devices, but we're ordering while everybody else is ordering devices. So we are going to roll out devices as we get devices, but our principals are going to be working with the technology department to identify where there are gaps. For example, we know that some students did not participate in virtual learning because they did not have access to devices or Wi-Fi. They will be a priority. Those of you who have devices, we need you to support us ensuring that we address those who don't have devices. Those of you that have internet, we need to your support as we focus on those who don't have access to internet. So when we implement or if we implement a virtual option or blended model, that should help ensure that all those who need a device get a device first. We had many students, about 50 or more, 50% 50 or more that had devices. However, we recognize that there is a need for devices. And so we've, we were in the process of ordering those devices. And as they're delivered into the district, our technology department will be working with principals to roll those devices out, issue those devices grades three through 12. We'll be using laptops for grades K through two uh, during the school day when they're face-to-face -face and teachers will be able to assign those laptops for virtual learning. Someone asked the question, what are the options for students with special needs? Students with special needs will follow whatever schedule we follow. 
and all of your services will be done virtually or face-to-face. -face. So if we do, right now, we're leaning toward option C, which is a blend. Face-to-face -face Monday and Wednesdays or Tuesday and Thursdays and then virtual on Fridays, then you will be working with your teachers when you're in school face-to-face -face, and virtually when you're not in school. So all services will be provided. Parents, it will be critical. It will be critical for you to uh, be prepared for these various options. Again, the Virtual Learning Academy, we will roll that out with some very specific uh, areas, uh, process for parents to sign up, things that you would need to agree to if you would like to be considered for the Virtual Academy. We don't know how many seats yet that we'll consider for the Virtual Academy. It depends on you all's response. So I need you, once we roll that out at the early part of July, to respond immediately. So again, option A, low risk, face-to-face. -face. Option B, higher risk, all virtual. Option C, moderate risk, a blend of face-to-face -face and virtual learning. Option D occurs concurrently with options A, B, and C, Virtual Learning Academy, and you will, parents will have to take action to sign up for that Virtual Learning Academy. So let's talk about Virtual Learning Academy enrollment. Again, you will have to register for this Virtual Learning Academy. That will be step one. Step two will be the application will be reviewed internally by staff. Step three will be your school counselor will review your academic history. And step four will you will receive a confirmation that you have been enrolled, uh, will be able to participate in the Virtual Academy again. We've got to determine the seats, and so we need everyone, once we roll that information out early July, to take action. You will receive your information, your confirmation. Participating in the Virtual Learning Academy means that you will receive all of your instruction, support virtually, online. You'll still be enrolled in your home school but you will receive your instruction virtually every day of the semester. So I'm going to go very quickly to the next topic, graduation updates. As you all have already heard, our graduation, our face-to-face -face graduation has been delayed until, postponed until the fall for various reasons, and virtual graduations will occur June 25th through 27th. Please participate in those virtual graduations. You know, I get a lot of emails. Oh, so-and-so, Henry County did this and this county did that. Well, we're not Henry County. There were uh, many different circumstances and data we had to look at, and we didn't have access to a 50,000 seat facility like Henry County had access to. That would have really made the difference. But be that as it is, we will, we will, plan and we are planning for graduations face to face this fall. All I can tell you is let's get this data, this pandemic data moving in the right direction so we can make that happen. But until then, participate in the virtual graduations and I want to thank all of the schools, principals, parents and all that had awesome uh, events, mobile events that celebrated our seniors this year, recognizing that we had to be creative in light of the situation. Here's the schedule for the virtual graduations. Again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, June 25th through 27th. Let's talk about school choice. School choice continues to move forward. Our IB and Cambridge programs are moving forward and all schools are working towards full participation. I want you to know, don't forget, Kilpatrick, Lake Ridge, Mount Zion, Unidos will host a drive-by recruitment session after the summer break. Parents of kindergarten students, you're able to apply to attend one of the language immersion schools for the upcoming year, July 30th through July 24th. Please pay attention to that information that's being sent electronically and take action. It's great to have students speak more than one language. 
We have the opportunity right here in Clayton County Public Schools for that to occur. And so we're encouraging our parents to take advantage of that. I hope you know by now, Clayton County Public Schools has an online registration process. We're encouraging all of our new parents, especially our pre-K and kindergarten parents who have students enrolling in our district for the first time, and those who are moving to Clayton for the first time, enrolling students, please help us get the word out. They can go to our website, online registration information is right there, the link, the entire process. I won't go through all of this for you, but it's a 24 hour, seven day a week accessible process. So take advantage of online registration. And also parents, you should know that we'll also be doing residency verifications because we need to make sure we have updated addresses, email addresses, telephone numbers on all of our parents. Uh, we know that many families have moved even during the pandemic. So we need to know who's here, who's planning on coming to school, who is in school in Clayton County Public Schools. And so we're encouraging you to follow the process. You may contact 404-361-3428 if you have questions, but follow the links. The links are out there on the website, clayton.k12.ga.us and student registration at clayton.k12.ga.us. It's an easy process. They take you a second or so to get used to it, but I'm assured by our counseling department that it's an easy, easy, easy process, but they're available to provide online support if you need that online support. I mentioned this, but I'll circle back around technology. Don't forget, we're working toward purchasing Chromebooks for all of our students. We want to commend our Board of Education, thank them for approving our request to purchase Chromebooks for all of our third and 12th grade students, which allows us to use our laptops for our kindergarten, pre-K through second grade students. We'll purchase those Chromebooks. We'll eventually get a learning management system that will support great instructional uh, resources and collaboration, and we'll continue to provide technical support. And so I want you to know that we've accelerated our one-to-one -one effort, our extending learning beyond the classroom, and Clayton County will, at some point, sooner than later, get devices in the hands of all of our students. And so thank you parents, thank you parents for your patience, students for your patience as we accelerate and we move our district forward in this area. Let's talk about safety protocols, processes and procedures. You will get, you should get in this email, a document that outlines the four instructional models and safety protocols, process and procedures. You have to know, parents and students, that we have processes, expectations to mitigate for transmission of the virus in our school system. Relative to masks, employees will be wearing masks. Students, parents, we're encouraging you to send them to school with masks. And we are going to ensure that schools have access to masks for those who may not have access to get masks. But parents, we need your help because masks can be pretty pricey and we only have a limited amount of funds. We need you to please, as you're shopping out and about buying school supplies, please add to those supplies masks and send the students to school in masks or with masks. They don't necessarily have to wear them. We're not telling them they have to wear them, but Remember, the purpose of the mask is to protect others as well as yourself. And so we're encouraging our parents, but we will have masks available at the various school sites. Take time to review these guidelines. You will see these guidelines as you approach our schools. And let's say this, parents. We want you to take full advantage of the virtual opportunities. We can meet you can meet with your teachers Googly, uh, using Google Classroom. I'll say Googly. I just made that word up. But you can meet with your teachers using Google Classroom. Teachers can set up appointments virtually. You can share information virtually. So there's no reason for parent-teacher conferences not to occur. It's just a matter of principals and teachers and parents communicating with one another, taking full advantage of the resources that are available to us. 
I want to encourage all of us to take advantage of the nutrition services. Don't forget, if you want a breakfast or lunch, we are still serving meals throughout the summer until July 24th. The sites are listed from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Anyone, anyone who wants to take advantage of these meal services, please, please, as soon as you log on to the website or go to the website, this information comes up as a notification. Our school nutrition staff, they are there to provide meals, breakfast and lunch to our community throughout the summer, just like they did, and they did well, phenomenally, during the spring as we were in virtual learning. They're doing throughout the summer. The sites are identified for you. Church Street, Huey Elementary, Lee Street, Point South, Tara, West Clayton, Kendrick Middle, Morrow Middle, Rex Mill Middle, Riverdale Middle, Forest Park, Forest Park High School, Lovejoy High School, and Mondays Mill High School. Take advantage from 9 to 12. Meals are free of, uh, free of charge and available to individuals 18 years of age and younger, as well as those of state-defined mental or physical disabilities. Nutrition services right here in Clayton County. In addition to the nutrition services, we're still partnering with the Atlanta Community Food Bank at five sites on Fridays, providing groceries for families. No reason for any family in Clayton County to be without food. Huey Elementary, Taylor Elementary, West Clayton Elementary, Riverdale Middle, Lovejoy High School. These services are free of charge and occur on Fridays from 9 to 12 at those sites on Fridays throughout the summer. A special thank you to the Atlanta Community Food Bank and all of our partners and donors who are supporting our efforts in this regard, and volunteers, and volunteers. I had to throw, we had to throw the census update in there. You still, if you've not completed the census, you need to take your census. As of June 18th, the nation has a completion rate of 61.6%. The state has a completion rate, Georgia, of 57.5% and Clayton has a completion rate of 54.7%. All right, you all, let's do what we got to do. Remember, money is direct. Federal funds are directly tied to us completing the census. We can't complain that we don't have enough federal money if we don't do our part. Get out there, ask your neighbors, help your family members complete the U.S. census. Let's exceed the state and national rate of completion. We can do that. Why? Because we are a high-performing community right here in Clayton County Public Schools. So just a reminder, general reminder, we need you to complete that census. It impacts federal funds. It impacts funding that the county receives, the school system receives, and it also impacts your representation at, at the federal level. And you know we need representation at the federal level. So I need you to stay connected. Don't forget, we'll be sending weekly updates right now. We're leaning toward option C but we'll be sending weekly updates to let you know what the data says and which way we continue to lean or if we have to pivot. But I need everyone, everyone to remain flexible. This is a very complex situation. Safety is most important. We're hearing and reading the reports that we're not even out of the first phase of this pandemic. Cases are already spiking. I need all of us to remain flexible. We don't have all the problems solved. I mentioned child care. I can't solve that today. However, we can do our part to ensure that we remain safe and that our students are learning and have access to learning opportunities, even throughout this pandemic. But I do need our community. I do need those of us who are listening. I need us to help social distance and let's do what we can to get the data going downward. We need to see a decrease in the number of cases in our county. We got to see that, you all. That's how we're going to get our kids back to school. My heart is heavy when it comes to our kids because they need to be in school. School is often a safe place for them. It's a place where they thrive, where they get a chance to interact with their teachers, they get a chance to interact with their peers. It's a safe space for them. No matter what you say, we need our schools. So 
I would love to see our kids come back face to face. We would love to see our kids come back face to face. But guess what? You all, it's all predicated on the data because we've got to be mindful of safety. We've got to get a vaccine. We've got a lot that we've got to do. But we also understand how schools and reopening of schools impacts the economy. Parents have got to get back to work and they need schools so children can go to school. And we know how child care impacts budgets, family budgets. We understand all of that, but we got to, as a community, as a state, as a nation, we have got to, while we appreciate our rights, we've got to be responsible. And we've got to do what it takes to get this data, this pandemic data, on the downswing, we've got to get it going in a decreasing direction. Stay connected. We'll send out weekly updates at 1 p.m. and July 28th. Very important, at 1 p.m., a few days before school, about a week or so before school. But just know this, we're going to have school on August 3rd. We're having school on August 3rd. Our principals are going to continue to engage their respective communities Today and beyond, I want you to stay connected to your school community. Stay connected to what's happening in your, your school. You should be hearing from your principal. You should be hearing from your teachers. I want you, all of you should be getting an infinite campus, looking at what's in there. At some point, you'll be able to see your schedules. You'll see that A, if it's an A day, or B, if it's a B day. If option C is, is the option that we continue to uh, plan to implement based upon the data, but we need you to be informed. We need you to be connected. Our principals are working to ensure that you're informed, to engage you, to support our communities. Teaching and learning is important, and we're going to do that. But we also got to, we've got principals working to ensure that families have food. We've got leaders working to ensure that we address the trauma that kids are experiencing. So we understand that sometimes before you can do teaching and learning, you got to make sure people are fed. You got to make sure their emotional needs are met, their psychological needs are met. We're doing just that in Clayton County. And so our plan is very comprehensive. It is inclusive of many aspects of schooling that are critical to the success of our children. Stay connected. Various ways to stay connected. And just know we appreciate all of you. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you to our Board of Education for their support and their um, commendations about these reopening plans, being grounded in data, being grounded in information, easy to understand, allows us the flexibility to pivot as the data changes. We will have school on August 3rd. It will be a great school year. So let's just gird up our minds, everybody. Put on a positive mindset. We've got enough drama going on in the world from the White House on down. Let that drama be as it is. Let's put on a positive mindset. Let's make sure we're good in our community. Let's support each other. Let's support one another. Let's deal with this situation. We didn't start it. But hey, it's ours to deal with. Let's make the best decisions that we can make. Let's keep it moving. Let's stay safe. Let's make it to the other end of this situation. Let's support those that need to be supported. Take care of those that need to be taken care of. Appreciate those that need to be appreciated and that should be appreciated. But let's maintain a positive, healthy mindset, attitude. Continue to love, support one another, encourage one another, help one another help one another. And I grant you, if we do those things, I think we would have learned what the pandemic wanted us to learn, that there are some things more important in life. And at times you need a message or a wake up call to remind you what's most important in life. I look forward to seeing you at our next Facebook Live session on July 7th, and then after that on July 28th at 1 p.m., Facebook, YouTube Live. I hope that this information has been helpful to you. Thank you for your participation. We will post this video after this session concludes so others can learn and participate. I encourage you to share it on your various sites, social media platforms, via email, et cetera.
Have a great summer. Continue to learn. Continue to rest. Continue to stay safe. And continue to look forward to our first day of school on August 3rd. Take care.